What's next once we receive our deliverance and we walk in it? I mean, I'm amongst everybody here that's delivered and you're amongst the family, but at my home, it, they're not. I don't have a physical church, I have an online church. So what do you do when you feel alone in a deliverance and you have your grandson hiss at you? What do I do? What do we do? God cannot steer a parked car. And so many Christians are paralyzed by the question of what's next Amen. when he's already told us what to do. As a matter of fact, there's been many times where I've gone before God and I've said, God, you gave Moses a burning bush. You gave Mary an angelic visitation, but you gave me scripture. I'm going to do what you said in your word. I'm not confused about it. I'm going to pray for the sick, cast out demons. I'm going to evangelize. God cannot steer a parked car. So go in motion, right? And really we're like bumper cars. Bumper cars hit everything in their way, but they never stop in motion. And so you're going to make mistakes, but make those mistakes. You know, I like to say fail forward, right? If we reach millions through the camera, we have to turn the camera off and reach hundreds in our neighborhood. You've got to learn how to, come on somebody. Come on. You've got to learn how to go the direction of the least amount of glory because our mortal bodies were not built in this corruptible state to actually sustain the weight of glory. In the Old Testament, when the glory came into the temple, they couldn't even stand to minister. And so, you know, for you, it's, it's about doing the work. You know, for me, I live in New York City. And so if, if I come here, 5,000 people, and I scream, Yashana, and 5,000 people scream, Yashana, and they're screaming in crying and demons are coming out, I now have to shut all the cameras off and go into my neighborhood and go try that there. You go into New York City and you say, Yasha, no, and they're like, shut up. <laughs> And that's healthy for my soul. I have to go to places where I'm not Pastor Mike. I'm just Mike, the servant of the Most High. There's no piano behind me. Come on, there's no band playing. And some of my greatest testimonies will never be videoed and they'll never be put on the internet and they'll never even be told. I don't even tell my own wife because I've got to counterbalance the glory because my body can't contain the glory. So after the deliverance, after the conference, after the hype, you've got to just be a faithful servant and do the work. And because, let me just warn you, because you, you talked about, what was it your grandson? My grandson, yeah. You are seeing the highlight reels of all the experiences that we have. I know, I'll, I'm going to give Isaiah props. I remember I was watching you do Deliverance Live on Zoom in front of thousands of people. And, uh, you know, you were dealing with this one particular woman, and it was like, it was going to have to turn into like a two, three-hour thing. And I knew he was getting at that crossroads where I was like, okay, this is going to have to be a deeper deliverance. What's he going to do in front of all these people? And Isaiah just lovingly pastored this woman and said, you got to go deeper in your repentance. And he kind of directed. And I said, you know what? I hit him up after that stream. I said, that was the least sexy deliverance, but, but you showed the people who follow you what they need to see. They need to see the whole journey. And listen, I posted the highlight clips. This is not a rebuke. I'll do it too, you know, but my point is there's a whole nother side to it. You know, you have to journey with your grandson. And so don't judge a book by one chapter. There's many chapters in that book. So you might not have the highlight. You might even lose a battle, but but you'll win a war. And that's what makes us all these wartime generals is we'll take our hits knowing we're going to win our grandson over time.